Hey, this is Chris with Team Radical, and this is Kyle, aka the Terminator, and Jake's running the camera, and we just wanted to go over our sickest system for this Oregon elk hunt. The weather has been extreme. We've seen temperatures up into the 90s to wind chills in the mid 20s. So we just want to go over all the gear we brought, and we brought a lot, and we used it all. So we did, and I mean, we literally went on some hunts from 75 degrees to 30 degrees in the matter of I don't know an hour. I don't know how many different fronts, rain. Hail, it was crazy. So the system that we're going to show you definitely works, and hopefully you, you guys will get something out of this. All right, so I'm going to start off with the core base layers we used. I, um, I got these XO official boxers, and they were great. You clean them. boxers? Dude, those are dirty. <laughs> Not dirty. You washed those in the creek. Oh. They dry quickly, so you could wash them and hang them to dry real quick, so I'm a fan of them. All right, next uh, we have our core lightweight leggings and uh, these worked out great this is the matching top and this stuff wicks moisture away super fast I love this stuff so obviously for warmer weather yeah that stuff this was the core short sleeve which I don't know that I ever wore this I did. Um, but Kyle wore this when it was 90 and I went with the core lightweight hoodie this is the one with the built-in face mask and I wore this most of the trip and uh, this is one of my favorite pieces that Sika makes. And here is the Apex hoodie, which has the built-in face mask as well with the hood. And the Apex pants. Both of these two were my favorite overall. What I did with the pants is I like to wear my core heavyweight bottoms. Uh, especially when the temperature got a little cooler. When the temperature wasn't cooler, I didn't wear them underneath there. Sorry about the blood on them. That's what happens when you shoot Kill big stuff. animals. Um, and then the core, or I'm sorry, the uh, Apex hoodie. It's awesome. It's got the zipper pocket here for your rangefinder or your phone or whatnot. And you can wear it where the hood's down. If you want to do just the hood, you can do just the hood. If you want to do the face mask in the hood, you can. And that worked out great. You didn't have to carry an extra face mask. It comes with elbow pads in, in the hoodie. And Chris and myself both took those out right away. Just felt kind of weird, so we took them out. But on top of the Apex hoodie, if it got colder out, what I like to wear, Chris has the brown version. I've got the, the camouflage version. But uh, this is the Kelvin light jacket. And it's got the hood. And this was my go-to if it got a little colder. I put this on top of the Apex hoodie. And I seriously stayed warm the whole time. Matter of fact, I had to take it off quite a bit put it on the backpack because it got too hot so so this is a Kelvin active jacket and this is probably my favorite jacket that I've worn on this trip I wore it over the apex hoodie most of the time and that apex hoodie is really like the fanatic jacket but the western version and that paired with this really allowed for a huge temperature swing and you can take this off uh, it's lightweight it packs into its own pocket and I can't tell you how great that was to just be able to stuff it in your pack pretty easily all right, this is a cloud burst suit and it is great. It is highly waterproof. We rode out many rainstorms, hailstorms in this, but it is noisy. Super quiet. It is very noisy. It is not quiet. It's so noisy that we made Kyle take his pants off because he only brought one pair of pants and they were I... soaking wet. So he ended up being the Terminator the rest of the trip because he roared. And That's stole. where the new nickname comes from, Terminator, because I tracked in my uh, heavyweight uh, base layer thermals all the way across, I don't know, three or four mountaintops to get in range of him shooting his elk. So these were really loud, but definitely for keeping the water off or the moisture or whatever. And the this, wind. Yes, this stuff does work. It is noisy, but let's face it, when it's raining or something like that hard, you're not gonna hear this because it's raining, it's loud. So it, it works great, but if you're gonna try to get in quiet, sneaking or whatever, I do not recommend having this on. It's it's also great to break the wind. Like I put this over the Kelvin light jacket up when we were on top of the mountain glassing in the mornings and I stayed super warm. I don't think any of us got cold that morning no. wearing this stuff and our insulation pieces. All right, so I'm wearing the mountain pants right now, and this is a mountain jacket. This is one of my favorite suits that Sika makes. I've worn this the last couple years turkey hunting in Illinois and love it. And for out here, it is awesome because it's windproof. 
Jake wore this suit most of the time out here. It really cut the wind for him and he's skinny and he needed that because uh, he gets cold really easy. So this jacket's also really quiet. The pants are quiet and it's lightweight. You know, you want to wear um, like an apex hoodie or some sort of insulation piece if it's colder out, but if it's not that cold, this, uh, this is a go-to suit. It's very quiet. So we know boots are very important for hunting in the mountains. And I chose to go with my Danner Vitals, which might come as a surprise to some people. They're uninsulated. They are not waterproof. They're water resistant. Uh, I did get them soaked one time and had to use a different pair of lace-up boots. And I immediately regretted getting these soaked because I really missed these boots. These boots were awesome. The whole time my feet kept tight. You didn't have all that play inside of there. They were really comfortable and best of all, they're extremely lightweight. And that was key for me. Had plenty of traction and they're relatively inexpensive boot. I actually bought them for back home for just checking trail cameras or doing work around the farm. But they worked perfectly out here in the mountains. So these are lower rangers. I've had these for two or three years now and I can't say enough about how much I love these things. They're awesome. They really suck my feet in. They don't swish around when I'm walking up the hills. So these were my go-to boots the most of the most of this trip, but they also got pretty wet. So I had to switch up and go to a different pair of boots. And these Danner East Ridge boots are the ones I wore when I killed my elk and we hiked up, I don't know, a couple mountains to go get them. And uh, they worked great. They're just uh, a heavier boot. Um, got good Vibram soles on the bottom. They're insulated, 400 grams. Pretty solid boot. I do recommend, do you recommend that on your boots, unless you're going to be sitting for a long period of time, which is highly unlikely, do not bring a boot that has insulation in it. I mean, you're going to regret it. I don't care if it's 20 degrees or if it's 90 degrees, whatever. Any insulation whatsoever. I mean, I had 400 grams in mine, the ones I had to replace these, and within 200 yards I was sweating my feet were sweating and You're that's starting with, to get blisters yeah and that's with super lightweight socks even so I do not personally like a boot with insulation in it I don't care if it's 20 degrees 90 whatever I do not want insulation in my boots all right this is the apex pack this is what I use this entire trip and I'm a fan of this pack um, there's a couple things I would have changed on it but overall it's a great pack I love how this really cups your hips and um, this is a frameless pack, but my back never really sweated really bad while I was wearing this and um, it fit me great. Um, if you're a little smaller than me, I don't know that I'd recommend it because I pretty much had this thing maxed out as tight as it would go. One complaint I have about it is I would have liked to use this as a whitetail pack too, but when they designed this, they made it so nothing gets caught when you're walking through uh, the brush. Well, it doesn't have a handle on here to hang it from a tree stand so that's kind of a bummer because i would have liked to use this uh with it being the right size for tree stand hunting but it's got good side pouches so you put your water bottle in there or i was putting my tripod in here it's got a good pouch right here i was stuffing my clothes down in here your gopro um, gopros fluid heads anything i needed quick access to and then it's got a pretty big pouch up here you keep the essentials toilet paper backup release, headlamp, all that good stuff. And then the main compartment- You had toilet paper this whole time? Yeah. Holy cow. The cat. main compartment's pretty good size. Um, it's got a spot for your water bladder. And I was able to fit my DSLR camera, snacks, video camera, and some other odds and ends in here. And overall this pack was really good. I was, I was glad I got it for this trip. So in case you forgot, that's Chris, this is Kyle. Hopefully this video helped you guys out on the sick of gear. If you got any questions, just drop it down in the comments. We'll try to answer it. It'll probably be Chris. But overall, this stuff worked really well for out here in the mountains here in Oregon. We went from 20 degrees to 90 degrees, rain, four different hailstorms in the a field. Even in the field, we got uh, uh, hailstorms and everything. So um, overall, overall, this stuff worked awesome. Chris, what do you think? It's great. I This really is the best that i found. I've gone through all the different camos. Kyle says I've tried probably every camo pattern and everything, and I love this stuff. It works, and I think I finally made Jake and Kyle believe it. Stuff works.